Magandang tanghali, Pilipinas! At pati na rin sa lahat ng mga nanonood sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo. Magandang umaga o magandang gabi kung saan man po kayo naroroon. Kamusta po kayong lahat? Thank you for joining us today to unpack the recently concluded Philippine national elections. We will be taking a deep dive into the prediction models and determine whether or not they have established trends and influenced mindsets on the actual vote. People will be talking, analyzing, and dissecting this presidential elections 2022 for years to come. Was Google Trends a better predictor than the presidential surveys? Did the Calle surveys, presidential cop surveys, or social media polls successfully get the pulse of the masses? Were the trending social media hashtags a better gauge for who's leading than the campaign rally body counts with drone shots? Welcome po sa inyong lahat to the 10th and final webinar of the National Forum on Communication and Democracy Philippine Elections 2022, so aptly named Anyare, Post-Election Analysis. I'm Cesc Orenia Drilon. And I will be your host and moderator for today's program, which may also be viewed via live streaming on YouTube at the TVUP channel, as well as on the TVUP and the Philippines Communication Society Facebook pages. We will also have some live tweeting, so please use hashtag PCS Forum Series with your posts. And before we begin, let's acknowledge the following. We'd like to thank the University of the Philippine System, the Office of the Vice President for Public Affairs, the Philippines Communications Society, UP Information Technology Development Center, or ITDC, EVUP, the Internet Television Network of the University of the Philippines, and everyone who has helped make this forum series possible. And because we have many faculty and students watching us today, PCS members will be receiving a certificate of attendance as a benefit of their PCS membership. If you have not applied for or renewed your membership yet, this is your chance to be part of the premier organization that represents the communication discipline to the Philippine Social Science Council. The online membership form is available on the PCS website, philcomsoc.org slash membership. And because this is a national forum on communication and democracy, we want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to be heard. We will be using Mentimeter so that our viewers on Facebook and YouTube will also be able to participate. We encourage everyone to participate in our mini quiz. Madali lang po ito, sali na po kayo. Your answers will be discussed during our panel discussion later on, and you'll also see how the other viewers have answered. Again, for all our viewers, including those on Facebook, please open your browser and go to menti.com and fill in the code that you're seeing on screen right now. The code is 4453 or simply scan the QR code on your screen. Okay. I know that everyone is excited to get the show going, so to set the tone of Anyare, post-election analysis. Let's hear a few words from the Dean of the Institute of Arts and Sciences of the Far Eastern University. Friends, give a warm welcome to Dr. Rowena C. Reyes. Dr. Elena. Hapon. Gandang hapon. Dr. Elena Pernia, PCS board members, our resource speakers, Prof. Ernier Barrios, Dr. Rachel Khan, my friend Ruperto Dickdow Jr., our beautiful moderator, Cesc Orenia Drilon, media practitioners, dear faculty and students from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Magandang tanghali. Anyare, we are seeing too many broken-hearted family members, friends, colleagues, and students. And so I ask, how do you mend a broken heart? Thank you for inviting me to the National Forum on Communication and Democracy, Philippine Elections 2022. 
The Institute of Arts and Sciences of the Far East University is one with the Philippines Communication Society in the quest to analyze, decode, and define further the elements and components of an election so that the strength of our democracy and our democratic institutions are protected and promoted further and perhaps heal, help heal some hearts wanting answers. The national election two days ago showed how reforms are badly needed, even if it signaled that the Philippines is still committed to the form of government that the nation has. Our participation in the election marks our desire to find leaders among ourselves who embody our collective dreams and aspirations. We just hope that the winners will stand by the campaign promises to uplift the people and the nation. We are in dire need of role models and authentic leaders. However, the democratic practice of finding leaders should not be romanticized and idealized. Instead, we need to provide spaces where we can examine the factors that led to the election of our national and local leaders. Today's national forum and post-election analysis will be able to provide us with descriptions and discuss discussions on what happened before, during, and days after the 2022 national election. We are here to listen and engage with experts regarding the communicative modes of predicting election poll results. Do we still trust surveys and exit polls? What forms of surveys can capture the sentiments of the Filipinos? Do we conduct surveys in all their forms sizes? Are Google Trends worthy of contesting or backing up survey results? The insights of the panel members will be able to contribute to the critical discussion that is not only supposed to be examined among communication and media practitioners. We need the conversation inside academic halls, in family affairs, and in friend group chats. The series of ground table discussions in the past months have been an exciting and timely collection of fora that investigated and pinned down the role of communication in media in Philippine politics. The series enabled the country to see that elections are equal concerns of economists, political scientists, communication and media scholars, and other social scientists. As a communication scholar, I am intrigued and passionate about analyzing social media campaigns and how these relate to traditional political campaigns. Obviously, now we are seeing a new formula in packaging the leader who will represent our country's dreams and aspirations. To quote Vicky Morales, do we just need a popular name to win in elections despite having no platforms? I hope that our invited speakers will deal with these questions this noon. As an academic leader, I look forward to the insights of our colleagues and experts when it comes to post-elections. Perhaps a thorough comprehension about political communication is a much needed skill that all our students must have to protect and advance our democracy. Again, welcome to the National Forum on Communication and Democracy, and thank you so much for the invitation, PCS family. Now, 45 by FE, FEU's DEFCOMS may alarm, may okay alarm. We want to understand so we can continue what some of us have already started, a social movement. Thank you, everyone, who made today happen. Thank you so much for your very inspiring message and for setting the tone for today's discussion, Dean Rowena Reyes of the FEU Institute of Arts and Sciences. How do you mend a broken heart? Yan talaga ang tanong kahit ng isang magulang katulad ko. And my answer was for my son to join and watch this discussion. You may now start answering your um, Mentimeter poll on your screen, simply go again, friends, menti.com, fill in the code that you see on your screen. And itong unang tanong, paano mo ilalarawan ang Philippine National Elections 2022? For this question, you may put in three words for our word cloud. You will see that the words will increase in size the more times this word is mentioned by our viewers in the Mentimeter poll. Ayan, we see some answers already coming in. Bring back Marcos to jail. Ay, ang laki nun na. Okay, <laughs> Ayan, yun ang nakita kong uh, malaki. O sige, uh, we'll leave the Mentimeter poll open for you as we go along with the program. iri reveal natin later ang inyong mga kasagutan later with our speakers. The second question on the next page, ha? 
ano sa palagay ninyo ang accurate method sa pagpredik ng election poll results? A, A pre-election surveys, B, exit polls, C, Google Trends, D, Cup survey, E, Calia survey, F, intercept survey, G, drone shots, H, campaign rally, attendance, I, social media hashtags, at J, social media posts. Ayan. So, uh, alam ko, the chat box is so busy uh, while our um, viewers are uh, uh, putting in their answers. Maraming nagsabi, nag-check in kung saan sila naroon. I saw somebody from Beijing, merong copies all over the Philippines po, Luzon, to Mindanao, nandyan ang ating mga participants at meron din sa ibang bansa. Okay. So, babalikan po natin ha. Have, uh, please do uh, participate in this Menti Meter Fun Quiz. I know it's not going to be just fun because it will be very, uh, it will indicate how we all feel about the past political exercise. Ayan. So, as we're hearing from our viewers, let's now hear it naman from the street, the word on the street with a person on the street interview with TV UP. Ito naman pata siya. Fair and square. Malinis, I don't believe. Um, marami naman tayo nakikitang anomalies sa numbers ng results. If if you just try to analyze the numbers, it really does not make sense. Um, kasi nga parang um, walang variability. All are consistent. And basically, um, why is it so perfect? And dun ka talaga magdudita. May mga questions din the back of my head na what if talagang totoo na talo? How do we move on? Um, yun. Parang being under a, a Marcos administration. Never in my wildest dreams would I have thought na babalik tayo dito. When history has clearly told us ano yung nangyari before. Minsan, yung ibaboto mo hindi siya yung mananalo. So, tanggapin na lang natin kung sino yung majority na pinili ng Pilipinas. Ang Pilipino is, uh, pinipili nila hindi dun sa um, kung sino yung magaling or sobrang daming kung ano-ano nagawa. Bas na kahit, kahit anong dami mo nang nagawa ay, eh, ang pinipila, pinipili pa rin nila is kung sino and kanino sila makakarelate. Ano, how can you say maano siya sa mga may hirap when his whole life, he was living a lavish lifestyle. I don't think there is a genuine connection. If you check the marketing strategy of the BBM camp, ang target talaga nila yung mga masa, di ba? Yung mga class B, yung mga class E. Yung halos lahat sila below middle class is, um, yun nga, uh, BBM talaga sinusuportahan. The fact that ano, they can make him look like He's part of the. He has a genuine connection with the lower income class. Shows how good of a branding the team did. Not less of what Bong Bong really is. Let's hope for the best. And yun nga. Uh, I think ang pinakamagkakaroon ng change sa bansa natin is hindi lang uh, itong term ni President Marcos, but um, kailangan magkaroon ng reforms dun sa sana malaman din ng mga tao kung ano yung mga requirements pa kasi kailangan magkaroon ng reform sa constitution natin. Let's always ask for accountability and that's very very important in this political climate. Kasi at the end of the day, kung sinong sinusuportahan mo, hindi naman hindi naman yung tao yung mananalo. Hindi naman si Bongbong or si Lenny yung mananalo. It should be the Filipinos that that should win, not one candidate. Thank you very much, TVUP, for giving us the pulse of the people through the person on the street interview. So insightful um, views from the youth. And to start off, nako, simula na po natin, let me introduce our distinguished panel of experts for our roundtable discussion on Anyare post-election results. You know, our first speaker was supposed to have been the founder and managing director of Strat-based group and the president of strat 
Space ADR Institute Professor Victor Andres Mangit. Unfortunately, po, I'm so sorry to tell you, to break the news to you, that his father passed away this morning. And we do, please, uh, I'd like to invite you to say a silent prayer for the repose of his father's uh, soul. So uh, in his stead, we have Professor Erniel Barrios of the UP School of Statistics. Magandang hapon po sa inyo, uh, Professor Barrios. And of course, next, we are honored to have with us on the panel the uh, Associate Dean of the College of Mass Communication in UP Diliman. She is a professor with the Department of Journalism and coordinator of Check.ph, which is a collaborative fact-checking project for the 2022 presidential elections. Check.ph is an initiative of the academe, media, and civil society to counter disinformation and provide the public with verified information. Please welcome to your screens, Dr. Rachel E. Khan. Magandang hapon. Hi, good afternoon, Ses. Good afternoon, everyone. And Doc Barrios, are you there? Uh, hindi po namin narinig ang inyong ayan. Good afternoon. good afternoon. Okay, and rounding up the panel, it is my pleasure to introduce the chairman of the Kapisana ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas or KBP. The KBP organized the Panata sa Bayan, the KBP Presidential Candidates Forum in February, as well as partnered with the COMELEC for the Pilipinas Forum 2022 in May. Please welcome to our webinar the president of the Manila Broadcasting Company, Ruperto Nickdaw Jr. Magandang hapon po sa inyo, June. Good afternoon, Te, uh, Ses, and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you, everyone, for being part of this roundtable discussion where we examine how close were the prediction models to the outcome of the elections. Okay, simulan muna natin yung person on the street interview that we just played. May I ask for... Oh, before we begin with that... Um, your reaction to the uh, man on the street interviews. Let's um, uh, bring to the screen yung slides muna ni, um, ni Professor Manhit, ni Dr. Manhit, para uh, ma makita rin naman nating lahat kahit wala siya dito. Okay, there are two slides that we'd like to uh, share with you from the presentation of Dr. Manhit. Okay, the first one is, um, you can see on your screen, presidential candidate who best fits selected criteria. Okay, nakikita nyo naman ang naging resulta nitong sa Pulse Asia. Ang scores ng, uh, ni Bongbong Marcos, ni Lenny Robredo, ni Isko, ni Manny Pacquiao, ni Lacson. Okay, shall we also share the second slide? Oops, and damning slide. <laughs> okay, at to. Uh, Senator Bongbong Marcos's strong narratives on social media. Okay, are you? We'd we'll give you a moment to read through this slide. Okay, any comments uh, from our distinguished panel? Sino gustong magbuena mano? June? Yeah, okay. okay. Well, mag mag I, I can start off, no? Uh, first, um, I, I'd like to, this is our, my observation muna, no? Uh, and I think it, it kind of relates to some of the comments mentioned earlier about the fact that uh, the uh, Bon Bon campaign uh, I think ran a, a better campaign in, in the sense that they, uh, they, they actually uh, uh, sold him like selling a brand. Uh, they addressed the pain points uh, of what the po a population did. And I think with the help of Cambridge Analytica, alam natin, they, they were helped by Cambridge Analytica. No? I think they were able to come up with a great strategy. They, they, found, they, they, they made, obviously, research and what the pain points are and what the people, what, what the USPS or the unique selling proposition should be for Bong Bong. And that's unity. 
So they, they came up, I, I think they did extensive research. And I think what they did was to identify ang kailangan ng tao ngayon, unity is the, parang yun, yun ang overall. In fact, if you, if you, look, you look at the branding, it's unity, it's, it's all about unity. No? Uh, that's, that's the first point. No? Uh, that they, they did a good, uh, they, they did a good selling of a brand, which is the brand of unity. Uh, pangalawa, I think, I think we should uh, uh, also point out that the Duterte name uh, is still a very uh, popular name. Uh, we know that the President Duterte still uh, has a very high uh, approval rating and so forth. No? So, so let me just point this out. Bong Bong would, have, would have not have won if Sarah ran as President. I think we know that. Know, know that. In our company, we actually ran several surveys. We ran four surveys. The first one was, was done in, in August. And at that time, Sarah was still running. And the, the results were, Sarah would have won. Sarah was, uh, let me see, uh, she was doing about 25, 28%. Bombang was doing 17 or 18%. Lenny was 8.3, Isko was uh, 11.2, Manny Pacquiao was 10, uh, and Ping was only 3.3. 3. So if Sarah won, I mean, if Sarah ran, she would have won. So the, the, I think the biggest strategy that this campaign did was to unite the forces of Duterte and the Marcoses. Because when we came to the second survey, namin, which was done in December, they were united. Na sila doon. What happened is that the numbers of Bongbong and Sara added up. It became 50%. It, it was adding up what the, what the August surveys was. So um, I, I think that that's the biggest thing, no? Uh, and that's the, you know, we, we call the billion dollar, billion peso question, okay? Uh, in fact, even the president was wondering, why the heck is my daughter uh, stepping down? She's going to win this election. And she would have, I think she would have won the elections had she, had she ran. Because uh, the, the mm -hmm. Demde, uh, 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 name is still very popular. And I think that that's shown mm -hmm. by... Uh, all the results, no? So, nung, 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 uh, nung umatras si Sara, ang nangyari lang, nag-add lang yung numbers. The followers of Bong Bong <laughs> added up to Sara's numbers and the, and the followers of Sara added up to Bong Bong's numbers. So, you just add those numbers. Yun, yun ang, uh, it may be simplistic, but I think that's what happened. I think that's the biggest strategy na, na pinag-usapan nila. Pag naglaman tayo dito, there would, there's a chance na maahati yung boto natin because they, they, they're the populist the, the two of them are the populist candidates. Diba? Mm -hmm. So, okay. uh, parang you're dividing the votes of the populist candidates if, if they run against each other. And uh, I think mm -hmm. the other candidates might have a chance because if you look at it, Lenny uh, uh, was searching. I can explain that a little later. No? Uh, ang mm -hmm. comment ko lang pala, I just want to comment in, in anong, ano, yung about the misyadong predictable and all that. Uh, we were, I mean, as you know, uh, KVP and the PPRBS are, are, uh, uh, are running this uh, 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 count, no? the electronic count. That, that's not true. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Uh. Medyo ano lang yan. That's all uh, conspiracy theory. Because we've, we were looking at the numbers, they're not consistent. It was like Bong was doing 70% and bababa siya ng ano. It's not true. So I... I, I I, you know, I, my, my, I voted for a candidate that didn't win, and I'm sorry, it, it, uh, all this uh, conspiracy theorists na, na misyadong consistent yung 68 uh, whatever, 68, 32. And in, hindi po totoo yun, I'm sorry. I, 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 we were looking at the numbers. Sige, yun muna, tanungin I, I natin yung mga statistician so, mamaya, June. <laughs> Sige. Okay. Rachel, you want to weigh in? Reaction yes, um, to the uh, graphs <laughs> and the... Uh, a man on the street and the man the street. Faults of the people. Yes. Yeah. Um, I generally agree with what June had said um, with regards to the effective campaign. Um, in fact, it was a very uh, effective pub public relations campaign, which was boosted also by uh, the effective use of this information. So between uh, a very good branding and strategic um, public relations, then you had... Um, the informal but also very effective use of disinformation strategies. Uh, mm -hmm. It's no wonder they're able to clinch it no, in terms of the numbers of um, the voters. Plus the fact that's why we see also 
a very big disconnect. As the slides uh, showed us, um, they're looking for uh, the least corrupt um, candidate. And then you have Bongbong Marcos as the highest uh, percentage. So I think that shows really the effectivity of the disinformation campaign because the, of the disconnect between the values which were the people were looking for, which um, I think we all agree with the values that they were looking for, right? I mean, there's no disagreement there. The problem was the translation of these values into the who fits it most. And I think that's mm -hmm. where this information comes in. Okay. Dr. Barrios, uh, perhaps my question for you, let's go not to the meat of the topic, yung maganda bang naging batting average ng mga pre-election surveys kumpara sa resulta ng eleksyon? Uh, maganda at hindi. <laughs> maganda ah, to some extent. Okay. Uh, medyo mixed, malapit. Mixed. Pero yung iba hindi rin. Pero meron akong uh, a comment doon sa sa slides uh, mm -hmm. ni, uh, uh, kanina na pinag-uusapan natin. Uh, sa palagay ko, uh, the, 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 that, uh, their side, uh, the side of the uni team, uh, used the most sophisticated research strategy that is ever uh, in, imagined uh, in, the, in, in uh, the research community. They utilized uh, uh, the data mining strategy that uh, invested on the big data that was generated by the social media. The social media, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, are very rich source of information. From there, we there are some uh, some, some mechanisms that can be used to extract insights. And from here, they were able to determine the aspirations of every Filipino on how they envision their president would be. And then coupled with uh, uh, misinformation, disinformation campaign, and taint uh, one, uh, uh, one candidate to be the, the opposite of what uh, uh, the citizen aspire, and the other one uh, painted nicely through effective means like uh, TikTok and so on. And that's how they, they actually won the election. Uh, okay. The main uh, uh, topic I'll be talking about later on is the 68 to 32% uh, ratio, sir, uh, June. I'll talk about it. Yes, yes. We'd like to hear uh, your views being, uh, you know, from the... UP School of Statistics. But going, going back to what you said, uh, Professor Barrios, hindi ba ginawa ng Lenny Campian yung pag-mine ng big data based on what you saw, uh, the way they communicated um, the, uh, their candidates or the way they projected uh, Lenny and Kiko? Sa tingin nyo, hindi gumagawa. Kulang ang research. Apparently, uh, their team was able to uh, invest long time ago, even before uh, the campaign period. They already uh, uh, invested, and as uh, Sir uh, June uh, noted, they uh, invested on Cambridge Analytica, which is which has now uh, closed. Uh, they are uh, they they had among the best data scientists in the world. And uh, we have a, a, a very good data scientists here in the Philippines, but unfortunately, uh, it was only in October that uh, VP Lenny decided to run. So the, 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 the mm, concerted yeah. effort was a little bit too late. Right. It would have started a too year late. ago. Too late. It's, it was too yeah. late. Agree. Medyo huli na nang uh, nagsimula ang oposisyon ang grupo nila nila Lenny. Base et, eto naman, bakit magkaiba balik tayo dun sa, sa sinabi ng mga kabataang in-interview kanina at dito sa slide na pinakita natin sa inyong palagay, bakit magkaiba ang realidad although you touched on that na yung yung um, disinformation no. Uh, magkaiba ang realidad ng halalang ito sa pag-unawa ng mga botante. Itong parang, uh, 
are we living in an alternate reality? Are they living in an alternate reality? Which is the real <laughs> she's reality? Uh, does my question make sense? Yeah. Uh, c- can uh, I answer? <laughs> uh, yes. uh, uh, Prof. Barrios and then Rachel and then uh, Dr. Yes. Nick Dawi po promote na kita. <laughs> Uh, I, I think there is a multiverse thing uh, existing here because if you uh, talk to uh, ordinary people, taxi driver and so on, uh, sasabihin nila kailangan uh, panoorin mo ng mabuti yung mga YouTube at saka mga TikTok tungkol dyan kasi pinapaliwanag doon yung mga nangyayari. So may, may alternate universe yung ibang kampo uh, where they think the facts are coming from there. And uh, uh, tama ngayon, yung uh, mainstream media is the fake uh, uh, fake uh, news source according to them because they were already conditioned mm-hmm. that there is a parallel universe of what reality is. Yeah. And lahat ng ito, ma- 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 madali siyang ma-, ma makita doon sa data mining that I was talking about. Unfortunately, it's very expensive because you really have to spend a lot of resources to acquire the data from Facebook and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Of course, data mining, there's nothing wrong with that. But um, spreading falsities and myths on social media... Uh, what is that punishable? How can we hold these people accountable? I mean, it's done. They're already going to be in power. And uh, uh, that's in addition to the, your comment, Rachel. Huh? You were about to comment on that alternate reality. But can you also comment on how do we... Paano ba natin sisingilin itong mga, uh, mga kasinungalingang pinamudmod? Meron bang paraan? <clears throat> um, well, I'm hoping that uh, the lawyers for Lenny uh, will look into that, into the legal aspect, dahil um, I am not a lawyer. So I really uh, <laughs> would not want to <laughs> comment on that. Um, at the same time, um, kailangan kasi itrace yung original source. And that will be the tricky part. Because um, what we find in the social media or what creates big data is really when it, the, this information is shared. And um, that makes it more complicated to really pinpoint or sino ang kakasuhan. Um, and then the alternate, to comment on the alternate realities, social media made it very easy because of what we call algorithms. No? You could get trapped in an algorithm where all you see are the fake news and um, the, the real news or the, the facts don't penetrate into your algorithm. Um, mm-hmm. And especially if, you know, our networks are very narrow, we only have people uh, of the same mindset. So our worldview is kind of, um, yeah, it's, 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 it becomes unreal in a sense that we are in, in a, Multiverse nga ang mangyayari. No? And that's why this information uh, becomes easier to spread. Once you enter a particular network, once they embed themselves in a particular network, then um, it, will, it will generate itself, basically. Okay. Um, June? I, was gonna, I, I agree with both. Uh, but I, I think... You're right. There's an alternate uh, universe, but I think it's it's fueled by the fact that, uh, as uh, uh, Doctor Baris has said, na una yung company bong bong mag ano mag spread nung ano nila. So na condition ng minds ng karamihan ng mga tao. Yes. So and, and in fairness to uh, check um, uh, the fact <coughs> uh, uh, organizations such as Check.ph, they try their best to to uh, bring out all those. Uh, disinformation, those all those fake news. Now there, we've seen a lot, and uh, as we've seen, the most of the fake news are against uh, VP Lenny, diba? and that, that, That's that's I think the the uh, conclusion on check that PH. They, 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 and they've been they've been published. Uh, unfortunately, because na una nang mag uh, mag condition ng mind yung mga yung yung bong bong camp. Kait na anong sabi mo pa jan, they won't believe. I mean. <laughs> 
you'll, you'll be faced with two, with two uh, quote-unquote facts. No? Which, do, which do you believe? Pag na-condition ng mind mo, you just believe what, what you, 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 you want to believe, so to speak. No? Yes. Parang naging loyal na ako dito. Eh. And, uh, unfortunately, that's what, that's what happened. As, as, uh, as was mentioned earlier by Dr. Barrios, na- nakunahan, nakunahan tayo. Mm-hmm. Nakunahan yung grupo ni VP Lenny because late siya mag-decide. Nakunahan. And, and you know, this, this campaign for Bongbong is not only the last year or the last two years. This is six years in the making. Ang tagal na, they, they've been planning for this for the longest time. She ran, he ran for, uh, uh, for BP in preparation to run for president this year. So this, this is, June, this nag-conduct is nga ba ang KBP ng exit polls? No, no, we did not. Did uh, actually, uh, our my company, MBC, uh, used to conduct exit polls except this year. And the reason mm-hmm. for that is uh, b- because uh, the use of the exit poll has been limited to a few minutes long. It's very expensive to, uh, to conduct exit polls. It costs anywhere from 3 to $5 million. Okay, and the use the use of that of that information is only good for like 15 minutes because because the pagsara ng polls mo. You can, by the way, you cannot you cannot announce the exit polls, the results of the exit polls, uh, until mm-hmm. after the the polls are closed. Mm-hmm. And within a few minutes from the uh, closing the polls, uh, in our experience, 15 minutes nanjanean. Although this year this year na delay ng isang oras, and there's a reason for that. Mm-hmm. Nagkaroon ng konting konting abiria dun sa dun sa UST but uh, we we didn't make that pub- I mean uh, the the comic didn't make that public anymore no? but because it's a minor glitch that delay ng konte but theoretically uh, within a, within a, like 15 minutes in the past except this year talapas mm-hmm. na kagayan so useless ang exit polls kasi mag 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 predict mo na from the from the actual results kung sino mananalo mm-hmm. bilis I mean this year was extremely fast. ABS CBN would ha- uh, would invested exit polls every election. Of course, syempre ngayon, wala nang well, wala, wala nang kakayahan uh, na mag-exit. We did, we did invest in that, uh, Ses. Uh, uh, MBC uh, used to conduct exit polls. We have, ang, ang, uh, ang total sampling namin, uh, 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 mga 35,000 ang, ang sample namin. So, nap, nap, napaka, uh, they're, they're very predictive. But you're saying in a quick count na ngay- ah, hindi na halos uh, hindi, hindi na halos magamit. Importante. Yeah, in uh, fact, uh, I know the, uh, there, there's a company that uh, I know a lot of the people in this in this call are against this group. The Publicus did an exit poll, uh, and they made it available to a lot of media, including ourselves. Except that they, they, uh, so we were going to announce their results. Except that lumabas yung exit poll result nila 8:30. By that time, luma, no, and we were already announcing the actual results. So you says. Useless as far as content is concerned at exit polls, unfortunately, because it's na- a ng windows. But they're, they're, I but, think, in our experience, they're predictive. Can you allude to that glitch that you said there was a one-hour delay? I mean, it's not important, but we'd like to know what that glitch was about. Um, it was... Uh, Did you know about I, I, this? this oh, I, I'm, I'm not sure about this, no? Pero ang, kasi, as I said, dapat by 7.15, nag announce tayo. Na delay ng konte uh, because okay. meron daw, may, merong, it's like this. The setup is like this. The VCMs are supposed to send the results directly to the transparency server. Okay, that's in USD. Mm-hmm. Uh, ngayon, the transparency server is supposed to uh, pass that that same data to a what we call the mirror server. And all of us, mm-hmm. yung KBP, yung uh, all the networks, yes. uh, MBC, ABS, have BMA, the mirror server. We will, we yeah. will, ang, ang sistema doon, you have a USB, isasaksak mo doon sa mirror, not the transparency, the mirror server, kukunin mo data, and then that's what you tabulate. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, ang nangyari, actually, if, if you recall, um, uh, three years ago, in 2019, there was a seven-hour glitch. Yes. I don't know if you remember that. We started yes, we remember. tabulating at 7.15, nagtatabulate na tayo. And then, after a few minutes, biglang huminto. Hindi ko magagalawing numbers. Ang nangyari daw doon, there's so much data coming in into the transparency server, hindi siya, maka, hindi siya makabato doon sa mirror server. So that, that's what they, they're supposed to have solved that problem this year. No? And they did. Uh, unfortunately, meron pa rin konting nangyari na hindi siya bumabato. So ang ginawa nila, minanual muna. And then later on, na-resolve naman yan. Na, uh, nung na-resolve na, ang bilis naman. In fact, uh, mm. compared to the previous elections, this was very, very fast. 
by about 10 mm-hmm. o'clock nang 90% na yung yung data natin eh napakadami na 90% mm-hmm. na normally you reach 90% siguro madaling araw na yon but this year was very fast uh, and i think it's uh, it was explained by commissioner Garcia that part it's because of technology Ma- mas mabilis ang transmission ngayon dati dati kasi mabagal ang transmission ng mga yung mga cell sites natin or or okay uh, 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 which so that, that which brings then. me to the question for uh for Prof Barrios maraming conspiracy theories na lumalabas masyadong consistent yung pagtransmit parang parang uh, hindi nagbago parang yung distribution was too equal between Bongbong and Lenny uh, ano po para ma- ma- masagot na yung mga ganyang mga duda sa ulo ng marami okay uh, may ishishare ako sa inyong Excel file oh, sige. I some computation <laughs> Sige po, while you're sharing. Kasi yan din ang lumalabas sa mga Q&A. Uh-huh. That are, was there mass cheating involved considering 1,800 VCMs malfunction yeah. and the votes ratio between BBM was linear? Okay. Okay. So, uh, Go it, ahead. ito yun, yung linear thing. Uh, kung mapapansin nyo, itong table na to, ito yung part nung nagsicirculate sa social media. I just captured it here. Okay. Okay. So um sa statistics, meron tayong tinatawag na central limit theorem. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Yung mean habang lumalaki yung sample size ay lumalapit sa totoong value ng ng mean. All right? Now, it, uh, ang proportion or percentage of vote shared by the candidates is an example of a mean. All right? So, ito um tiningnan natin yung uh uh, kasama ito doon sa table na nagsi-circulate sa social media. Meron tayong uh, 1 million nag-send, naging 17 million, naging 22 hanggang naging 36 million. And then for here, ito yung mga corresponding uh, uh, 70% si Marcos, 29% si VP Lenny, 67, 32. For each of these uh, number of votes accumulated. So that's that's a uh, that's a cumulative uh, count by the way. So uh, itong 13 1 million kasama yan dito sa 17 million and so on. Kung sana yung uh, yung uh, votes na pinag-uusapan natin dito fresh vote tapos constant yan, there's something wrong with it. Pero dito kasi cumulative yan. Ngayon sa statistics that's uh, that's possible. That's uh, statistically sound hindi yan irregular kasi sabi ng central limit theorem, kung ano yung totoong proportion habang lumalaki yung number of votes that we are counting, nagiging malapit tayo doon sa totoong proportion. So, ito. Okay. So, kunyari, ang totoong proportion ay 32% si VP Lenny, 68% si Marcos. Alright, so... Base doon sa central limit theorem, kinukumpara, kinukompute natin yung range <laughs> So kung nasa 1.3 mil, million na yung pumasok na votes, tapos ang totoong vote ni VP Lenny ay 32%, 68% si Marcos, ang mangyari ngayon ay at 1.3 million, we expect na yung vote ni Marcos will range from 66.64% to 69.36%. Ang kay VP Lenny, 30.64% to 33.36%. Yung doon sa, sa, sa transmission, si Marcos ay naka 70.05%. Medyo mas mataas dito. Okay. Si VP Lenny ay uh, 29.95%. Medyo mababa ng konti dyan. Alright. Mm-hmm. Pagdating ng 17 million na yung count, okay, so we expect si, si Marcos will be between 67 to uh, 68%. Si VP Lenny, 31 to 32%. Pumasok na ngayon ito yung numbers nila dito sa range that we are talking about. Okay. Okay. Hanggang sa pagdating dito sa... So is it clear sa, to everyone? Pagdating dito sa, sa 36 million, so ang range ngayon ay 66. Uh, uh, 67 to 68 percent. 
67.75 yung lumabas. It's within the, the range that we are expecting according to the central limit theorem in statistics. So statistically, mm -hmm. there's nothing unusual with the proportion that is expected as what the central limit theorem is telling us. Okay. How about, uh, Professor, the uh, VCMs that did not uh, work um, based on percentages. Would would this be a big number? Would it have affected um, the outcome? Uh, we 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 need to know how many uh, uh, VCMs exactly uh, malfunction. All right. Now, mm -hmm. other than this, there's a possibility still that something wrong happened in the course of transmission. Because some okay. are doubting why the transmission is so fast. Well, of course, uh, because the technology is improving, we expect transmission to be really fast. And then there were uh, questions, uh, uh, why do we uh, uh, anticipate possible uh, uh, manipulation uh, when, in fact, before the, before the, the election, uh, all uh, representatives of the candidates are invited to inspect the machine, to look at the SD cards, to, to look at the codes that are inserted in, uh, that are placed into the, the, the uh, SD cards. Now, there's still a possibility that in the course of the transmission of the data to the transparency server mm -hmm. and uh, to, to wherever it will go, a, a code, a program can intercept this along the way mm. that's possible uh, there's a techno it's technologically possible of course I, I'm, I'm not claiming anything here however once we have um, a cross check the actual manually counted uh, votes versus the transmitted votes at the precinct level and we can see discrepancy then that's a probable cause uh, for further investigation. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. uh, the numbers itself, I don't see any, uh, there, there's nothing statistically that we can uh, say it's unusual. Uh, there's no mm -hmm. problem with that. Uh, yung consistent okay. the numbers, walang problema yun. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But there is still a, a, a possibility that something happened in the course of transmission. But the okay. only way for us to verify that is through manual uh, uh, cross-checking with the manual count. Which is the what the PPCRV is doing. That's right. Although and I'm not so also clear. there is that there's also the audit, the um audit that's being done uh by Comelec. So yeah, by, by Although, NAMPRAL, random manual audit by NAMFRED. Ran random manual audit, correct. By NAMFRED and by I think PPCRV are uh, is going to uh, manually encode ten thousand. I'm not sure if this is uh, ballots or uh, precincts. I think it's ballots. Uh, now, ngayon kailangan nating malaman how the ballots were randomly selected. Because the mm -hmm. proportions that we can see from there is not necessarily a reflection of the proportions that we would expect uh, in the man, in the transmitted data. Okay, so that uh, bears watching still, just to set our our um, my. I mean, for for us to be at peace with the results. Yes. Mm. Uh, uh, okay, Dr. let's uh, go. Sorry, uh, yung PPCRV go ahead, go ahead, all, all COCs. COCs ang binibilang ng ano. What, what happens kasi is every, every clustered precinct, di ba, lahat ng may VCM, will print, will print a COC pag, pag close nila. And those are the ones being sent to PPCRB. So PPCRB will count all 107,000 COCs. So 100% yun supposed to be count ng PPCRB. Yung NAMFREL is random yon. They will only select a few randomly uh, precincts that they will count. Uh, but but PPCRB will count all of the COCs, uh, Dr. Barrios. 
that will be great. Okay. Then we it, it, uh, it, it needs for us to see and compare the encoded versus the transmitted uh, data electronically. Yes, yes. That's actually what happens every okay. every election since since the start of this uh, electronic uh, you know, uh, 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 method that we uh, that we've done. So every, every in, and in fact, PPCRB will report if there are any discrepancies. And in in the past, we've reported some discrepancies, but very very minor discrepancies, less than zero zero one percent ang ang report on discrepancy uh, when when they do the uh, the report. All right. So let's uh, go back to ano bang ba reliable, de ba, na mga survey? Kasi every, um, against the result of Pulse Asia and SWS, um, VP Lenny and Kiko's followers were banking on Google Trends that showed seemingly a reverse uh, outcome. And there was also this last minute survey purportedly, but we could not really uh, look at the methodology purportedly by UP, Ateneo, and LaSalle um, uh, professors, I'm not sure professors, or alumni, showing that uh, the lead shifted to the camp of VP Lenny. Great? Yeah. Um, Would you like to comment? Yes, thank you. Um, with regards to the Google Trends, we could see um, that there was a big change in terms of statistics in Google Trends from January to um, April. But then Google mm -hmm. Trends cannot replace polling because it only shows um, interests. So it, it actually aggregates um, Google searches that are made by internet users. And by... Mm -hmm. Uh, so it actually shows, uh, it can tell you the, the interest, and you can see that ever since they started the rallies, the, inter the interest of the public um, increased. No? The, the, the Google Trends, dun siya tumaas. So it showed that it was effective in terms of people now were looking at or looking for information about Lenny and Kiko. But at the same time, it does mm -hmm. not tell us what kind of information they found. And that's the problem with Google Trends, diba? We don't know if they were able to, to get into the sites that were telling truthful information or they actually found further disinformation. And that's the big problem with uh, Google Trends. That's why it cannot uh, really replace, let's say, opinion polling in terms of... Um, you know, determining or predicting uh, elections. Um, but we can see it, it, it can be used um, sa campaign. You know, campaign managers should have been able to use it to see where the interest was going because it, it can be, uh, it shows sub-regions no, where interest was growing. So um, that's where people could have gone, you know, they could determine where the house to house was still needed or further information could have been pushed uh, with regards to uh, the Lenny Kiko mm -hmm. campaign. Um, so yeah, so it's more for helping to push the campaign rather than determining its outcome. Or could it have been the Lenny camp being in their own echo chamber, just um, you know, multiplying their own messages, I suppose, or social media Is posts? Um, that's possible as well if um, because it aggregates it. So it, it also cannot determine where the searches are coming from. Um, so yes, it could be just one camp uh, doing the searches. Um, but then it's also very hard to do since it aggregates all searches. Um, you know, so, so it's very hard for one camp to also influence the number of searches but but mm -hmm. yes it's i mean you know the, it could it could also be pushed that way and i think in some instances because of the misunderstanding of google trends that's actually what they tried to do yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. prof barrios mabalik ako sa inyo kasi maraming di ba tinawag ng false asia yung false asia did you feel as a you know a professional um, did you feel how did you feel about it about how if the poll doesn't go your way, um, it, it's false. <laughs> I mean, uh, kumbaga parang uh, uh, 
binaliwala yung minsan yung yung shensa shensa na maaring pumasok dun sa paggawa ng survey. Ah, uh, I I I cannot say ah uh, ah. Uh, there's something wrong with the methodology of any pollsters in general because if you look at their uh, websites, the methodology is supposedly statistically sound. So I, I don't have any uh, problem with that. I think uh, what, uh, what uh, is the more crucial uh, thing that we should examine here is the coverage of the uh, representatives that they are... Uh, uh, trying to analyze and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Pulse Asia is uh, 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 open about this that they were not able to represent uh, A, B and so on. Okay, and uncertain uh, demographics because uh, 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 recent uh, polls surveys uh, outside the country um, realized that uh, the voting preferences would actually vary depending on social demographic profile. Uh, mm -hmm. Socioeconomic class is just one. Age, uh, gender, location, and many others contributes to the uh, 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 voting uh, preferences, voters' preferences of a candidate. So uh, by not being able to uh, 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 thoroughly represent certain uh, segments of the uh, segments of the voting population. There, there are some uh, questions or issues that we need to uh, look at on the validity of the results. However, kung ako yung doon sa mga uh, na, sa candidates, sa mga nagka-campaign, I will take it as is and then uh, play on what are the sentiments of those who actually are reported in the, uh, who were actually covered in the survey? Because uh, mm -hmm. DE, for example, is uh, the biggest part of the population. Mm -hmm. So, kung ako yung magka-campaign doon, sila yung tatargetin ko kasi ito yung sentiments nila at, at the moment. So, kahit na sila lang yung na-represent doon, I, I, I'll, I'll make it a point that Yung, yung kanilang aspirations ay ibibigay ko sa kanila. So, yun yung mm -hmm. uh, sa tingin ko magiging take dapat. But hindi mm -hmm. kung sino yung nananalo, sino yung hindi mm -hmm. nananalo. Kasi yung, yung poll surveys is based on opinion, on perception. Mm -hmm. And perception mm -hmm. can easily change. Uh, mm -hmm. kung, kung, kunyari, yung nakita mo lang si VP Lenny na na very humble, very honest, or or whatever, it will easily change your mind. So, uh, yung 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 uh, uh, mga data na nako collect sa poll surveys, I don't think na it's very stable because it's based on perception. However, mm -hmm. it gives us a a clue, uh, a, a direction kung paano dapat natin i strategize para makuha natin yung sentimento nung nakakarami, which is DE, mm -hmm. basically. So are you saying hindi nimble enough yung kampanya uh, ni La VP Lenny to mine what those surveys indicated? Mukhang kulang sa tingin ko. Yeah. Rachel, they could, have been, yeah, they could have been using it, they could have been using it, pero kulang. Kasi uh, yun na nga, mas, mas nag, uh, tumututok tayo doon sa pagbaliwala ng, ng, ng surveys kaysa sa paggamit ng survey para to, to our advantage in, in campaigning. Yes. Rachel? Yeah, I agree. Um, it looks like they started to pay attention to what the surveys were saying and even what Google Trends was saying towards the end of the campaign. Um, they began the campaign. First, they began late, right? Because of the decision, the late decision to run. And then they were using, at first, very traditional approaches to mm -hmm. campaigning. Mm -hmm. When the other one had a head start, they, I mean, they never ceased mm -hmm. in 20, from 2016 onwards. Uh, plus, yeah. Cam Cambridge uh, Analytica also had the practice of the Trump uh, campaign. So, you know, they knew what they were getting. They knew what to look for. They knew how to strategize. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so 
And then even when it comes to the disinformation, one of the things that um, was kind of frustrating for us in Check.ph, we were doing, yes, we were doing um, fact-checking, but then they left it to us to do the fact-checking. Hindi nila, hindi sinagot ng Lenny Camp yung disinformation against them. You know, they, mm-hmm. they let, they let us try to correct it. But then, um, as we said earlier, there was already a mindset that had been placed there by the early, um, you know, social influencers of the other camp. So it was mm-hmm. very hard to, to combat that already. No? So, um, mm-hmm. and then sana kung sinagot nila, instead of um, going that the line, for example, the what we were seeing in the polls that they were saying negativity, you know, of the Lenny camp, they should have already ceased uh, the negativity or, you know, even if everything they were saying was true, uh, maybe that part of um, showing uh, attempts at historical revisionism and all the tax evasion, they could have left it to the fact checkers and spread the positive message instead of using, you know, there's a lot of quotes saying that um, when she's calling BBM a liar and that actually worked against her, diba? Right? So um, those things, they should have listened. They should have done more social listening, I think, mm-hmm. uh, in their campaign. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which was effectively so, used by well, the anyway, way this in is... the other camp. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, nah. I, yeah, yeah. But, okay, um, we will still have a, a, an open forum naman, but you know, ang dami talagang masakit ang loob at ano, because we saw this surge of, uh, we saw this mm. groundswell uh, late, in the, late in the day, but still it's there. So, um, this is my question naman. Ano kaya ang gagawin natin? Sa, ano ang dapat gawin sa kanila? Dito mo nakikita kasi na kailangan talaga ang planning. Hindi pwede yung parang nag-decide ka lang tapos um, baka manalo ka biglang ganun. No? But, um, of course, the blame doesn't go naman to VP Lenny for that. It was like she was really forced into it. But what, how do we harness this um, this uh, volunteerism that, that came out during the campaign of VP Lenny? And where what is the task of the opposition now? Um, for me, the first thing that should be addressed is um, based on social listening. You know, we f- we see that there's a lot of uh, acceptance to the historical distortions, historical revisionism. So it's really as as Lenny also said, you no, know, it's an education crisis. And I think those who started, there were a lot of initiatives on voters' education. I hope na hindi yan overnight initiative, but all those, you no, know, all those. Um, NGO, civil society groups, and even um, just academic groups who had come together for voters' education, that they continue that until for the, at least for the next six years at the very least. So mm-hmm. that um, in the same way that um, the other camp had harnessed uh, social listening from 2016, let's do that now um, until for the next six years. No? And not not mm-hmm. put our guard down. Not pag election lang, oo. Oh, hindi yeah, yung parang yeah. susunput ka lang sa election. Exactly, exactly. And I think even for for fact checkers, no, me, um, there were several of our members who were doing fact checking, but they were really focused at the time on pandemic fact checking. No, we only shifted to election related fact checking, um, in January, while the TikTokings and the YouTube uh, social influencers. We're already there from 2019. See, so and nobody, and that was under the radar because it's very hard to track video. Um, so, so you know, this was going on, um, and we also came in kind of late. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, mm-hmm. Um, you wanted to add more? No, that's okay. Yeah. No, okay. I, I so was... those who are feeling quite depressed can channel. Um, their efforts to to this um, uh, advocacy. Yes, Ju- June. Yeah, I, I I agree. No, I, I think what what's what uh, I know that uh, natalo But I think that there's something good that happened here. No, uh, 
to, to be to be uh, to be accurate, I think uh, towards the end, I think we, the BPLN did that. Kaya lang they were they were attracting the a certain socioeconomic class, di ba? Da, daming ano? Uh, ang problema yung mga talagang diehard BBM di na makonvert talagang uh, nandun na sila eh. But the, there's a ground swell of a lot of those who were either passive, di ba? Or don't care about politics. Now they, they, they become politically aware. And I think this social activism that, that's been generated by the Lenny campaign should be harnessed to uh, for several things. Number one, to, to correct facts. So itong fact-checking natin, I think should continue. Unfortunately, uh, there, there's a lot of uh, work that needs to be done. Uh, NGOs such as such as uh, Rachel's group and the, even traditional media should continue with that. In fact, that's that's one of our advocacies in, in the KBP right now. But more than that, I think the the, the activism should continue to to ano, to, uh, to to uh, to uh, to make sure that this this new government uh, that comes in will will uh, will do its job no, properly. In other words, magbabantay tayo ngayon. Dapat that this activism yeah. will now be channeled towards making sure that this this government does its work properly. Kung meron tayong makikita ng mga corruption issues diyan, I think those should be brought up uh, right away and uh, parang babantayin natin itong itong bagong bagong administration na to. That, 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 I think that's what should happen. This uh, this activism that that we've uh, that we've harnessed uh, should should continue to do its work uh, in that. Mm-hmm. How about mainstream media and traditional media being also demonized and being portrayed as the source of fake news? And uh, how do we combat this? Um, that actually helped the, the spread of the disinformation, right? It made uh, disinformation channels, um, it allowed them to easily come in. Why? Because mm-hmm. since, since uh, 2016, uh, the state players have been trying to um, undermine the credibility of media. You know, there's, a, there's been a constant attack on mainstream media yes. um, that has also produced a chilling effect on, um, on the journalists. No? So, for example, yes. what, what we don't see or what is not being um, answered by fact checkers like us are actually the troll attacks on uh, journalists who come out with news reports. So, um, and those, there are very, there are some who, you know, despite all the troll attacks and, and whatnot, uh, threats, they continue to work. But there are several who are, you know, they do self-censorship because they are, they now are afraid of um, what can happen to them. And then, of course, there are media owners who I think are the most effect, affected by the chilling effect because the last thing they want is an ABS-CBN happening to them. No? So, mm-hmm. um, and I think that's where the problem lies, and that the, the media owners themselves are affected or have been chilled in that sense, that they, didn't, they don't want their journalists to be as aggressive as they normally are uh, in terms of covering corruption, no? in terms of reporting um, anomalies, etc. No? And, and that's the sad part. Now, if there is pub, there's a public swell of support on media, it will be braver to uh, enable mm-hmm. it to do its job. No, but there has to be, they have to feel, because the media has to feel that the public wants media freedom. No? Sometimes we don't feel that, uh, unfortunately. You know, it's not as, as strong as in 1986, where uh, people really valued uh, freedom of the press. Um, so, so I think that's because where the precisely because precisely of the attempt to make them uh, to attack to them, them that they're biased, you know. So yeah, there's a, there's a confluence of events. Right, right, that, and this information yeah. also helps make media look biased. Right, that that was part of the work of the social influencers. Um, especially on YouTube, those who had already established channels that were co-opted into this campaign. Um, that was one mm-hmm. of the strategies. No? To first is to uh, discredit mainstream media. So that's part. The part okay, there, there's, right. There's one, uh, there are several uh, questions here. In, I'm reading from the Q&A uh, a box. 
uh, one here, um, I'll try to combine them. Ano? Considering the gravity and impact of using AI on the future of our country, it now becomes important to legislate, one, mandating debates and attendance thereof, and air the national TV to provide Filipino voters a fair and transparent way to discern their candidates. Define and two, defining minimum qualifications of our candidates. I'd like you to react to that. Um, but uh, the worry is uh, people with, uh, with, without ethics, with money, will hire lawyers and contest it to the Supreme Court. <laughs> okay, another question. Sama samahin nyo na yung pagsagot nito ah. Yung, do you also attribute the lack of crisis management communication in the part of Lenny's camp that led to negative perceptions during the campaign? Uh, okay, sige, yan na muna siguro. Okay. Shoot. Uh, Shoot. Yeah, all right. Um, I think that, as, as we said earlier, uh, the campaign came late while the uh, attempts at disinformation and also the character building of um, in the Bong Bong Marcos camp was already on its way, no? um, very effective. They also, in terms of answering all the campaign strategies of, of Lenny and also some claims, not, um, I wanted to bring up the four uh, Ds of this information that was very much um, used by the Bong Bong Marcos um, camp that was very effective to dismiss, distort, distract, and dismay. Um, and it was very it used very effectively by that camp, no, to dismiss. Sometimes they will just dismiss uh, an allegation as, you know, that's nothing, that's not true. Uh, or uh, para kami na nga yung ano, binubuli oh, kami yung mas ape. kami. Oo. Oo, kami yung ape. Kami. Oo. Oh. Or distort when they, yung what uh, they're guilty of. They blame the other camp. For example, you remember the onion, the the onions mm -hmm. being used for um, the Photoshop, a picture of a rally. So um, they're guilty of it. They accuse the Lenny camp of doing the same. You know, so that's one. And then distraction. They change the topic. They change the conversation. And um, if it's not followed through, and that was the I think lacking. Um, you know, they were very passive in answering the distracted, um, when distraction was used um, in this information, there was a lack of speed in answering that, no? Um, and they left it to official fact checkers to do that. And then dismay that this is what is uh, more insidious because it was a troll attacks against those who, for example, you put your, uh, you are from the Lenny camp and you put something on your news feed. Um, there were trolls that would um, comment viciously on your feed. Um, whether you're a journalist or an ordinary person, you know, they had people hired to even um, within your own network to um, badmouth you or to, you know, to put up the scripted troll um, answers. So, so these were the very um, tactics that we saw that were kind of effective, unfortunately. Okay. At this point, I'd like to um, uh, call to join our discussion si Dr. Rowena Reyes, who gave the opening uh, remarks. Please join our discussion and weigh in as I open uh, the floor to questions from our uh, viewers. Please put your questions in the um, Q&A chat box so I can read your questions. Should we now? Okay, let's... Um, also, please do weigh in on um, the, the results of our Mentimeter poll. So, tignan na natin yung ating uh, Mentimeter poll. So, the first question is, uh, paano mo ilalarawan ang Philippine national elections? Okay. So, there you have it, ang mga malalaki. Bring back Marcos to jail. Disappointing, heartbreaking, frustrating. Delete TikTok, misinformation. Delete Facebook. Okay, any responses? Siguro, Dean, kayo na muna. Since I just brought you into this um, Salamat, discussion. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, kanina nakarisibo ko ng mga messages kasi um, tanong nila nga... Uh, Tama nga, masyado tayong na broken-hearted sa nangyari. But listening to everyone now, 
Um, and I like what um, Junik Dao is saying, but we have to keep calm really and, and, um, uh, and, and, and take in everything and be calm and be the voice of reasons, reason for our students. Otherwise, um, kung isa-isahin natin kung where we're going to get our, our, our uh, reason to believe in the elections, it, it, it might not be enough to just get it from one source. So, um, or reason to continue to believe in our country. Yes, yes. So, so we really have to continuously educate our, our students. I'm sorry, I'm coming from a, 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 a uh, point of view of a teacher and, and I'm seeing so many requests to cancel classes. But really, we have to keep calm and we have to continuously feed them with the right information. Junik Dao, thank you. Ang dami mong sinabi na, wait, that's not true. That's not correct. When if only people realize, yes, maybe we came in late, late in the game. But, um, but we have started something big, something social movement, social activism. And, and, and I, I had a conversation earlier with Dr. Gigi Alfonso. And yes, um, it will take some time before, for all of us to mature and accept what happened. But, but uh, coming together and, and trying to find reasons, uh, um, explanations, I think kahit papano, we might be able to mend some broken hearts, but still we have to dig deeper and, and read as much as we can so that we'll understand what happened. Mm -hmm. And the, the feeling of the youth we should not let it go to waste. I mean, you know that the, the enthusiasm that they had. This, that's also that's our the feeling. Depression. Yeah, that's also our feeling, yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, my son does not want to have kids <laughs> because of the oh, outcome. No. Of the oh, Maybe no. our kids are friends because that's exactly their lines, really. They, they see things different now. So we have to really be careful also what we feel you know, what, what we put out there. What we tell them, yes, yes. yes. And yes. How, Sometimes it's how... not us, it's just that what's out there. Um, I heard one a research person saying that they were, they were um, in a pandemic lockdown for two years. And what's their source, right? They don't read traditional media. It's just social media. So, uh, I mean, I, I think it's really just strengthening our call for Media information literacy for our students, yeah. and and um, okay. to be to explain and not just you know when they say something to us and and give our personal stuff, but to explain both the left and the right. I mean the good and the bad, so that they really fully understand. Right. Let's bring back the uh, first image, and um, yes, the the okay. Uh, Prof. Barrios, gusto niyo mag-comment? Prof. Barrios? Uh, ang masasabi ko lang, yan din yung nasa center ko. <laughs> <laughs> so, tugma. 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 Uh, at saka nung anak ko din. <laughs> yan din yung kanyang iniisip. <laughs> Oo nga, so lahat tayo, ano, kailangan nating uh, maging busy at hindi malulong sa depression. You know, we, we cannot be paralyzed by this. Okay, let's go to the next. The next uh, page. Oh, Jun, uh, want to give us more words of wisdom and inspiration? <laughs> Actually, hindi yung, yung first na yun, lahat tayo, we agree with that. Eh? Although in my case, uh, uh, I, I, I knew that was going to happen because we were, it, it's related to this one. Because as I said earlier, we were doing our own polling. We did, we did four uh, pre-election surveys. And uh, uh, I appreciate what, what Dr. Barrios said kanina. No? Uh, but the, yung sampling namin, Dr. Barrios, was, was pretty random. We, we hired an expert to do our sampling and we covered the entire country. Uh, but you're right. Uh, uh, in the, pag nag-survey kami, well, we, we kind of simulate a ano, uh, parang election talaga. We, we came up with a, some kind of a ballot and we just asked the, we, we, we did it, ano, we, uh, ang uh, consultant namin identified randomly some, some region, some provincia, some, some town, some barangay. And then we start with a certain place and then we count number five. So it's really random. No? So papakita lang namin and they, they just check who, who they vote for. It's like, it's like simulating a, 
an election no so it was very predictive of ano of uh, uh, the results no nakita namin uh, as i said si uh, si Bongbong nung nag-sanib where sana sila ni Sara um, uh, ang unang survey namin nasa 49% na siya agad eh tapos ang ang trend niya pataas uh, we were hoping nakakain si Lenny doon sa ano doon sa 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 share ni Marcos ni Marcos hindi eh Marcos continued to go up because he was running a, as we said, a good campaign. But so did uh, VP Lenny. VP Lenny started with 17.8.3%, in fact, no? Kumakit siya 16.2, naging 21, naging 24, and then ultimately, as we saw, naging 28% siya. That's the final ano niya, share niya, but 28%. So both of them are on an upward trajectory. And it was, the, the I think the polls were really very kind of predictive of uh, what what was going to happen that marcos will win by a landslide uh, because he was con he continued to to gain uh, instead of losing followers he continued to gain although bb mm -hmm. lenny also gained by by even a big by, by even a big number no nag gain si bb lenny na more than ano eh, from from uh, 8.3 again 28% siya so nag uh, and uh, naka 20% ang gain niya Si Marcos, unfortunately, mm -hmm. continued to gain. So from 49 sa amin, naging 58 pa nga siya, di ba? So naggain siya ng mga 9%. Lenny gained more, but uh, unfortunately, Marcos... Is, Not uh, enough. Hindi, 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 hindi siya nakakat into the Marcos. Naggain pa nga si Marcos. Ang nangyari, both of them gained from the others. Nag, <laughs> Nag-implode mm -hmm. si Isco. Mm -hmm. Even okay. even si Ping Lacson, wala na. na uh, I think mm -hmm. hindi nga na naka-1 million si Ping Lacson eh. There was a lot of hope uh, at the outset for for Ping, but all of them, but, uh, I think, uh, uh, yung mga uh, siguro mga undecided didn't, didn't the go for the, those that uh, had no chance of, of winning anyway. Mm -hmm. so, Here's an interesting comment, and I think also this is a time for self examination. You know where you we did wrong, so that you know we can do better next time. So he. Um, Agree or disagree? Everyone is talking about misinformation and BBM's lies, not realizing that their problem is how the two camps manage perception. Leaders are the ones who set examples for their followers. BBM chose to pull off Sun Chu's art of war by keeping silent all the time and letting the Kakampinks explode out of irritation. The result is that many Kakampinks resorted to educating, in quotation marks, people with arrogance giving people facts when the class C2D didn't even need it. These people need kindness, which a lot of kakampings failed to represent by succumbing to their pa passionate hate for BBM. The perception they gave to the mass is arrogant, elitist, and promoters of cancel culture, which is psychological. Kakampings fell into the dirty trap of the dictator's son. So VP Lenny could have pulled off Selena Gomez's tactic. She called out her fans when she noticed they were becoming hurtful to other people. Uh, this commenter would like to say, I voted for VP. But, you know, really a time to really examine also. Hard, hard self-examination. What do you think? Yeah, um, I think I said earlier that um, VP Lenny should have let others, I uh, know, explain that why he is a liar why he there's his, you know and she should have kept self. silent yeah not herself um because it became um you know we're trying to get away from the personality war eh, which she reinforced mm. um unwittingly by some of her comments which mm -hmm. um because of the very good research on the other camp they knew how to avoid you know and he can easily deny it by since it was all his people doing all the dirty work, he can easily say, it wasn't me, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's where I think the shortfall in terms of understanding, uh, you know, what people were thinking. Communication. The, social, the communication of the messages, you know, fell apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yung debate. Um, <laughs> obviously, hindi na necessary, ganun ba? <laughs> Should we legislate debates, require it of our candidates? Prof. Marios, do you want to weigh in? Uh, siguro kailangan kasi uh, dito natin talaga makikita yung, uh, 
yung totoong data forma ng mga kandidato. Uh, kasi kamukha sa, sa mga senators, uh, pa, anong maaasahan natin kung hindi natin alam kung anong balak gawin nitong mga to sa, 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 sa Senate? So uh, I, I, I think uh, legislation is important, pero sila din yung nandun. So who will initiate the legislation? <laughs> <laughs> so, so pa pa ikot ikot lang <laughs> katawa tawa eh mga for sure dominated nilang congress di ba nabanggit ko din na sa still insist doesn't mean na yeah. patalo na tayo di ba na, nabanggit June. mo kanina i'm sure it was uh, sorry go ahead bro nabanggit mo kanina yung tungkol sa ai and uh, ethics and so on okay. uh, sa palagay ko uh, it's about time that we uh, revisit and update the uh, data privacy act kasi dito papasok ito yung mga ganitong usapin eh so uh, I, i i think Uh, it's about time that we uh, update the Data Privacy Act. So somebody, at least in the Senate, should uh, champion uh, the, 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 the cause for uh, uh, looking into the uh, ethic, ethical aspect of uh, artificial intelligence in general. So, so we should take on the big uh, players, Facebook, yes. Google. Yes, yes. We should, no? Yeah. We should take our, we should um, challenge them. Can we? Uh, no. Uh, pwede kasing ano, pwedeng, uh, uh, hindi, wala ako masyadong alam dyan. Kasi pwedeng at the country level, merong mga specific guidelines kung ano yung mga pwede, ano yung hindi pwede. Uh, which, which can be uh, part of the Data Privacy Act. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts on that, Rach? Um, I would be cautious on anything that requires legislation no? because it can be used against the good, uh, especially mm-hmm. when you distrust uh, the government that's sitting. You know, um, They're mm-hmm. already talking about constitutional change as early as now, and uh, it's a scary thing that after we fought for the 1987 constitution, that it could be, um, yeah, it could just be changed overnight. No? So, yeah, so while there are solutions that should be looked into, um, I don't want to jump the gun and say this legislation or laws or rules are um, the solution there. No? Um, I think we have to look for a middle ground, um, perhaps also the continuing um, talks with, For example, I see already some positives in terms of the applications like Meta looking at um, un- you know, the coordinated, un- um, coordinated uh, misinformation that that's, they're, you know, they're doing something. But I think they should do more in that regard. That's where AI can come in because you can trace um, you know, uh, coordinated uh, messaging. Um, mm-hmm. So that's one area that, that can be further looked into um, and I think we have to explore others but I would uh, step back when it comes to, to laws. Legislation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here is an interesting uh, question and uh, observation from JC Kui. Leg- legacy, legacy media failed in its mandate with little airtime and corporate influence that content is biased and sometimes sanitized or watered down. How can legacy media be more nimble and have more teeth to address pressing issues without bias and filter? Si June yan, okay. dapat legacy media. Oh, oh June. <laughs> o nga, legacy media. Parang, uh, oh no, mukha daw tayong commercial, mga ganun. Oy, wala na ako sa legacy media. <laughs> no, actually, kung... Um, be- between... Uh, I-, I know that there's been a lot of... Uh, um uh, uh, criticism ab- ab- about you know, and uh, we have to admit uh, you know you, you, you cannot legislate what what your what your uh, anchor people or news people will say you know? sometimes they, they have their own biases uh but there, there is a uh, a mechanism at least in the KBP uh, for addressing that if, if you don't if you have a complaint against any station or any 
uh, or any announcer or any reporter, you can actually complain, and uh, and that that's going to be acted upon. No, uh, so um, I, I I understand uh, the the sentiment, but uh, I think compared to what to uh, between uh, legacy or traditional media, uh, at least in the traditional media, there are ombudsmen, there are uh, self-regulatory uh, um, uh, structures that addresses. Uh, uh, certain concerns about about legacy media. Com co compare that with with the digital media. Digital media is anarchy. Anyone anyone can be a broadcaster. Anyone can be a blogger, and they, and they can say anything. Uh, walang walang uh, walang responsibility. Walang accountability, di ba? So you can say anything, and nobody will nobody will uh, sanction you. That that's the problem with uh, with uh, with digital media, and that's. That's uh, and we're trying to kind of uh, with with a group like uh, Check.com. Even even us, we're trying to uh, uh, point out uh, those those kinds of dis disinformation. That a lot a lot more needs to be done because we're dealing with so much, so many uh, bloggers, so many uh, you know broadcasters in digital media out there that can that can actually do a lot of damage. No. Uh, I so, think you know, June. The closure, uh, the uh, failure of ABS-CBN to get its franchise, plus the the legal troubles of Maria Reza, have really led legacy media to be in fear. Yeah. You know, the long and short answer yeah. is yes. 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 At least, at least for broadcast, uh, says no. Hmm. And uh, uh, and I heard, is it true, uh, June? Supposedly. Hindi ba may claim ang mga uh, pamilya Marcos sa isang network jan? Baka yes. daw buhay nila. We we heard about that. Uh, you heard it, ah? Huh? Well, that, that's been a long. I mean, that 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 rumor or uh, information has been known since you know since the Marcos left. Uh, alam natin that one of the big networks is supposed to be owned by IMEDA and so forth. I, I don't know what will happen to that. If I ask a question from Bobby Barrero the other day, because he, he was with that net network before, diba? and he mentioned that, uh, that there's some, some truth to that now as to what will happen uh, with the return of the Marcoses. I don't know what will happen uh, if they will reclaim, mm -hmm. reclaim ownership of that. Because you're, you're opening up your uh, the ill-gotten issue again, because, you know, uh, so I don't know what will happen with that. So, okay, now here's, let me bring in some more comments from uh, our participants and audience. Odilin Avisilia, Mom says the crisis management communication of BBM is a strategy of Trump. Watch our brand is crisis that is the same campaign strategy they use. Any comment? Rachel? Um, I think I already mentioned it earlier about the yeah. four Ds, no? the dismiss, distort, mm -hmm. distract, and dismay, mm -hmm. which uh, they mm -hmm. used it to a maximum effect. So yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that would be my comment. And and um, they're going to continue using that, I think, um, to sustain the next six years. Um, mm -hmm. So actually, what we should be doing um, is, as Mam Rowena had said earlier, uh, to increase media literacy. Um, and mm -hmm. perhaps historical his literacy as well. You know? So these are the things that we should be looking into um, in the next six mm. years. Okay. This one addressed to Ma'am Nenny and Dean Barrios, Tony D. Igalinos. Have schools of communication, notably uh, CMC, considered revisiting their curriculum and see how adjustments can be made to address disinformation in the long term? The School of Statistics Data Science Program is a good partner for a consortium with media conglomerates taking active part. Uh, okay, on the part of the University of the Philippines, the College of Mass Communication has continually uh, been looking at its various cu curricula and, in, and uh, uh, adopting new courses. Regarding this information, uh, Professor Khan right here can tell you about what the journalism department has done. And in the communication research department where I was once connected with, we uh, there are there are there is a uh, particular program that addresses uh, 
uh, you know, social media and measures, you know, social media misuse and disuse. And lastly, on the part of uh, collaborating with other institutions, whether within the university or outside it, the University of the Philippines has been very, very aggressive in doing that. Check.ph is just one example of them. Uh, I can name a few more, but then uh, I will take more time. And then lastly, <laughs> about artificial intelligence. You know, we in the university are looking particularly at that and uh, and uh, looking at uh, the ethical considerations for this. Uh, pretty soon, uh, we will have a center, you know, uh, that will study artificial intelligence. Uh, that by itself is not just a physical center, it will also be a cross-disciplinary, interdisciplinary center, which will, uh, which crosses the arts, engineering, the sciences, you know, and of course, the social science, the sci social sciences. Thank you. Wonderful. Ayan, that's so much to look forward to. Dapat mag-aral ulit yung mga nandyan sa legacy media. <laughs> Di ba, June? Anyway, we have time for one last question and we'll make this a fast round for everyone on the panel. Okay, here it is. If there's one thing you can change to improve the national elections, I would have wanted to ask the one about Robin Padilla leading the senatorial race as compared to uh, Chel Jokno, who is in number... 27. Uh, yeah, um, well, 15 ba? 16? Siguro yun muna, bago ano, and, and because the, the survey failed to track that, uh, Prof. Barrios or, or Rachel, would you like to comment? Bago yung last question. Uh, oh, sige. I think, I think June, Robin was in the top si Professor Barrios. I think Robin in, in, in the service was in the top 12 naman. Papasok talaga siya. Number one na yun. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. But diba? a lot of, uh, I mean, you know, we've, we've seen na uh, similar uh, um, happenings in the past. No, for example, Grace Paul. Mm -hmm. nung, nung tumakbo si Grace Paul Senator, nobody predicted uh, her to be number one. She was, in fact, at the start, na, nasa number 22 yata siya. And then nung magbago mag-election, na pumasok siya sa top 12. But nobody predicted uh, her to be number one. I, mean, mm -hmm. I think pagdating sa election, either siguro yung sampling natin, hindi natin nakukuha yung mga, yung mga mm -hmm. CD. I don't know what, what happened. No? But in the case of Robin, maraming nag-hazard nag, uh, nung guess bakit biglang umakit si Robin ng ano. Kasi in-endorse daw siya ni Duterte at the last minute. Uh, okay. So, okay. Prof. And, Marius? Uh, and, and, uh, con, con, uh, ano, uh, yung si Tulfo has been consistently number one in the survey naman, di ba? Mamagsak number three. I think it's a combination of the fact that Lauren uh, really spent a lot of money in the campaign. Number two, hindi siya endorsed oh. naman. Si Tulfo was not endorsed by Iglesia. I think uh, if you if Tulfo got two million from Those the Iglesia, factors came into play. Uh -oh, hindi, hindi siya nag number one because hindi siya Iglesia endorsed. But I think in the case Prof. of Robin, it's because ang, a lot of people are saying it's because the president endorsed him. That that shows you malakas pa rin endorsing power ni Presidente. I mean, to, for him to be able to uh, uh, get Tolentino and uh, Bato and go win as uh, senators, I mean, that, that, that shows you how, how influential his endorsement is. No? Okay. Prof. Bar Barrios? Ah, siguro isa lang... Um, that may dadagdag ko uh, yung underdog uh, ano ng mga Pilipino na kung sino yung underdog and perceived to be inaape ay siya yung pinapaburan kasi everybody's uh, 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 talking about uh, anong gagawin niya doon and so on uh, although uh, yun na nga na, uh, yung popularity uh, endorsement and so on uh, work nandun na siya but being number one I think nakuha niya yung puso ng masang Pilipino na uh, yung yung underdog ang papabura natin. Okay. So in closing for all uh, five of uh, four of you rather, uh, ano ang uh, gusto niyong palitan 
para mapabuti to improve our elections. Quick quick round. Rach? Rachel? Um, I think that um, rather than, I saw some comments in the Q&A regarding MIL. No? I don't think that we should depend on the DepEd uh, neither for teaching history nor for teaching MIL, but um, what we have to do now is to train the teachers, whether even if it's um, you know outside class seminars on on helping public school teachers or even private school teachers teach these two courses, so that we could help more people understand really what's going on and not fall for the disinformation that's happening on TikTok or YouTube. Um, I think it's a starting point, um, but you know, a lot more has to be done. That's for me. I'm sorry, I suddenly lost my connection. Um, uh, Prof. Barrios. Ah, uh, siguro kung merong uh, papalitan, uh, try to uh, uh, put more uh, regulatory policies on uh, the conduct of surveys, kasi. Uh, may possibility din kasi na yung mga surveys will uh, 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 lead to the uh, 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 bandwagon and so on and so forth. So kailangan yung, uh, yung design, yung methodology ng surveys are, follows a certain uh, guidelines, uh, maybe uh, by professional organizations, uh, which is what they're trying to do in uh, Australia now. Uh, nag, they're trying to formulate uh, guidelines. Ito yung mga dapat natin gawin. Uh, this, this should be the, the basic uh, requirements of uh, an, uh, a, a valid uh, survey designed for poll surveys and so on and so forth. Thank you, Prof. Barrios. Um, June and then si Dean Rowena Reyes naman after you. Uh, so yes, may disclaimer muna ako. This is the opinion of June Nick Down, not of the network. Huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, sige, okay. Sige. But uh, anyway, I, I think ang pinaka pet peeve ko dun sa but we've discussed a lot about uh, you know the um, disinformation all that, and I think that that's been discussed enough. No? But ang pinaka pinaka pet peeve ko dito sa election and for our political system is the issue of dynasty. You know, uh, I think kung 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 uh, ang papalitan, I think it's already in the constitution. I think there should be an enacting law to really implement anti-dynasty. I mean, makikita mo ngayon, it, it's a farce, no? They're supposed to be anti-dynasty, pero palit lang ng palit. It's the same, it's not the same person, but the same family, no? In fact, ang daming, parang ginawang enterprise and politics. I think that's that's number one that needs to be done. In fact, if you look at the history of the Philippines, nasira tayo ang trajectory ng Pilipinas Nung Marcos decided to be to perpetuate himself in power, I, I, unfortunately, BP uh, Lenny didn't didn't uh, didn't uh, ano na. If you recall, the Philippines was number two only to Japan, panahon ni Marcos, and because we did not continue that that cycle of selecting leaders properly, uh, corruption uh, uh, crept in, and look where we are right now. We're na, na overtake na tayo, pati Vietnam yata at Laos na mauna pa sa atin. And unfortunately, that, that's what happened. It's all about perpetuating people in power. That's the anti-dynasty thing. The Constitution provides for it, but hindi na implement. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be if our legislators, because sila mismo ang impacted dito. No? And that, in fact, by that, that's a policy of VP Lenny. Only one person in the family runs. But uh, as you can see now, there will now be Two Villars in the Senate, there will be two Cayetanos in the Senate, there will be two Estradas in the Senate. My God, I mean, this, this is going to be... And the provinces, I know, cities. exactly. Lahat. Why, why, why mayor, vice na? mayor, mag, magkapatid, oh, oh. Mag, mag-anak, hindi. Ay, no. Yes, from the law... Maraming the, salamat, uh, Joe. Grandson, sila, sila, sila lang yun. No, no, we, we're, uh, our, our, our political situation is not going to change unless we... We actually implement that anti-dynasty provision in the constitution properly. That's number one. Of course, the others are debates. You. I agree. We should legislate debates. Uh, and uh, on the issue of yung AI and all that, mahirap pa legislation, but I think we can work with the private uh, social media platforms, uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter and all that. I think we can work with them so that they they can. Uh, 
they can have better governance in the, in the, especially when it comes to to a certain extent but I think there's a lot a lot more to to be done with that I, I think that, that that's what, what I have to say now Baka we can focus our efforts there yung mga kabataan Sure. Yeah. Um, baka pwede sila doon mag-focus ng efforts nila. Okay, Dean Reyes. Ako, I have two things. One is, um, as I said earlier, MIL, Media Information Literacy. And second is, siguro yung voters' education. Ako, I'm guilty. I started a year, just a year ago. But if we had it, you know, a, a constant, um, then perhaps mas may merong tayong... Um, a, um, impact na naggawa sa ating mga sudyante. So, yun. MIL and voters' education. All, every year, not just a year before the election, it should be there. It should be constant. It should be strong. Thank you. The fight is just beginning. <laughs> we thank you very much. Uh, we thank very much all our speakers. I know this is a very hectic season for all of you. You had to overcome as well your <laughs> depression and uh, you know um, uh, the sadness we appreciate that you have shared your wisdom in our webinar today we're now sharing the evaluation poll results and as expected a great percentage of our viewers have given very high marks for our panel so ayan po ang mga questions na sasagutin ninyo sa uh, each uh, there are five questions, and these are the choices for each question: strongly agree, agree, disagree, and strongly disagree. So the first question: the panelists demonstrated thorough knowledge of the topic. The panelists were able to properly organize their thoughts in answering questions posed by the participants. The panelists spoke clearly and audibly. The panelists used appropriate language with technical jargons adequately explained. And the panelists contributed to the perspectives and knowledge on post-election analysis. Okay, as mentioned earlier, we're now launching our post-test so you can assess your progress in knowledge and understanding acquired from this webinar. Okay, so we, you, I, uh, that will be uh, also... Uh, on your screens. At this point, we will keep the post-test open in the background as we proceed with our program. Now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you the President of the Philippines Communication Society and the Vice President for Public Affairs of the University of the Philippines System to give the synthesis and closing remarks. Please welcome Dr. Elena E. Pernia. Thank you very much, Cess, and thank you for uh, to our resource persons here. At this 10th episode of our National Forum series on communication and democracy, had our resource persons unpack campaign dynamics, polling, and voting trends, importantly, the aftermath of our national elections. Two days after our national polls, anyare is the question in the minds of many voters and observers of Philippine elections. This year's Philippine elections had the highest turnout of voters, with 65.7 million Filipinos casting their votes. It was also the fastest in transmitting election returns. However, there are reports of voters having had to wait five, six, even up to 12 hours before they successfully casted their votes. And also reports about the possible disenfranchisement of about 1.1 million voters due to anomalies and irregularities such as 1,800 vote counting machines breaking down or malfunctioning delayed or non-replacements of SD cards, and the absence of technicians in the precincts. The COMELEC, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, and the Philippine National Police characterized last Monday's election as generally peaceful and safe, despite reports of intimidation, red tagging, violence, and failure of elections in certain areas of the country. Comlex spokesman admitted such incidents but called them isolated. 
and comparing this year's elections with the 2019 midterm elections, the AFP said it monitored only 15 election-related uh, uh, violence nationwide compared to 60 such incidents in 2019. It is against that background that we had our last webinar. It began with Far Eastern University's Institute of Arts and Sciences Dean, Dr. Rowena Reyes's wise words. How do you mend a broken heart? She asked. She rightfully recommends participation in a forum like this afternoon's discussion to understand what happened, to gain insight on what are trustworthy sources of information. I agree with Dean Wang that a thorough understanding of political communication, ethical, political campaigning, is what our students of communication and media need. Thank you, Dean Wang, for pointing out how important it is for us Filipinos to continue moving forward with this new form social movement. Our moderator, says Orenia Drilon, then engaged our resource persons, Professor Erniel Barrios, who is with the statistic with the School of Statistics, the UP School of Statistics, Professor Rachel Kahn of the UP College of Mass Communication and Project Coordinator of Check.ph, and Ruperto Dickdow Jr., President of Manila Broadcasting Company and the Chair of the KBP in a roundtable discussion. Victor Andres or Dindo Manhit, who is a founder and managing director of Stratbase, who was supposed to be with us this afternoon, uh, uh, but unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, his uh, father passed away. Our condolences to him, to him and his family. He shared, Dindo shared with us a couple of sli several slides, a couple of which were used by SES to jumpstart the roundtable discussion. I will do my very best to synthesize the main points, but my strong advice to you viewers is to review this episode, which will remain available in the TBUP YouTube channel. One, did survey results correctly predict the partial and unofficial vote counts for the presidential, vice presidential, and senatorial races? The answers are both yes and no. There is no evidence that the methodology of credible survey groups are questionable. Secondly, uh, the campaign team of winning candidates Marcos and Duterte did a good job of selling the brand unity, using survey data to define the winning combination of Marcos and Duterte. Thirdly, their effective public relations campaign integrated disinformation strategies. One evidence of this are the data showing the disconnect between what voters saw as essential values of a leader and the characteristics of the winning presidential candidate, Mr. Bongbong Marcos. Fourthly, this year's winning presidential campaign showed the utility of data mining strategy or investing on big data from the social media to extract insights which are then used to create and share this information and content that are that can be seen in hyper partisan websites facebook pages and various social media accounts this strategy is data driven it is scientific but these are used to condition the minds of voters. Uh, winning candidate Marcos had an early start in using these data mining strategies. And unfortunately for losing candidate Robredo, the campaign used them too late. TikTok, in fact, now is the propagandist's new campaign tool to win elections. The success uh, fifthly, the successful creation of an alternate universe you know, uh, was important you know, uh, because these are the ones that contain the misinformation. The algorithms of social media created traps, created this fake news universe. Number six, 
Is there basis for the groups protesting uh, the 2022 election results? Was there mass cheating involved considering the difference between Marcos and Robredo being linear? From Professor Barrios, we learn about the central limit theorem in statistics and that nothing is unusual with the proportion. It is as expected. Number seven, however, there is a possibility that in the course of transmission of data to the transparency server, there, there could be, uh, you know, that could be where uh, the distortion lies. A code could capture the data. But this may be revealed if it happens by the random manual audit of NAMFREL and the manual encoding of C COCs by the PPCRV. Evidence of anomalies will be in uh, when you compare the results of the manual count and the, uh, and the COMELEX uh, random audit with uh, with, the with the data that have already come in. The eighth point, malapit na. Google Trends cannot replace polling as it measures interest. People looking for information, uh, you know, uh, is what Google Trends can track, but it cannot track the kind of information that they find. There is no way to determine if the information that these individuals seek and find are verifiable information or are actually disinformation. Google Trends can show where interest is in order to push the campaign rather than predict election outcomes. Unfortunately, and this is the ninth point, uh, the camp of uh, VP Robredo was not nimble enough in using Google Trends and survey information for their campaign purposes, nor did they address the false information and historical revisionism early enough. Uh, I'd like to end with some lessons and ways forward still coming out of uh, the discussions this afternoon. Base sa mga leksyon ng halalan, klaro na ang mga klaro ang mga kailangan gawin ng COMELEC para sa susunod na mga eleksyon. Number one, we need new machines para walang breakdown. Pangalawa, these machines must be tested before election day. And thirdly, COMELEC must anticipate anomalies and problems no, coming out of vote buying, the simple lack of pens and secrecy folders, the closure of precincts even before 7 p.m., the presence of armed police inside polling places, and the spread of false information, sometimes by government officials themselves. And then, para sa ating lahat, tayong mga mamamayan, ano ang kailangan nating tugunin at gawin? Number one, regarding false information, particularly historical revolution, uh, revisionism, we should advocate for continuing fact-checking fight historical revisionism, correct the whitewashing. Importantly, address those of us who are in the academe, address the educational crisis that begins in our basic education. Pangalawa, bantayan natin ang ating bagong gobyerno. Be watchful against corruption. Number three, we should all understand and talk about artificial intelligence, and privacy issues. In fact, there must be somebody to champion data privacy, the co champion the cause for ethical artificial intelligence. Fourthly, support our free press, the non-renewal of the ABS-CBN franchise, the harassment and attacks on journalists and conventional mass media resulted in a chilling effect resulted in self-censorship, and all of these contributed to the rise of disinformation. There must be a public swell of support for media so that our journalists and our media owners become braver. Panglima ko, mahalin natin ang ating bayan. Pagtibayin natin ang ating tiwala sa proseso ng demokrasya. Patuloy tayong magpakita ng malasakit at kumilos tayo para sa kapwa natin. Nasabi na nga na ang namulat, hindi na muli 
pipikit. Hindi natin kailanman hahayaang makatulog buli ang pag-asang magising. This webinar is the last in the series of the Philippines Communication Society's National Forum on Communication and Democracy. On behalf of the PCS and the UP system, I thank our moderator and resource persons today and in the nine previous webinars, and especially you, our audiences, our dear communication and media students, faculty, and professionals. Please watch these webinars again because these are indeed educational resources, not just for those in communication and media, but more importantly, for the general public. Para sa patuloy na pagmulat nating lahat. Pumunta lamang kayo sa tvup.ph at bisitahin ang YouTube channel ng TVUP. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Patuloy nyo kaming sundan dito sa Philippines Communication Society, www.filscomsoc.com. Org. Maraming salamat muli at magandang hapon. Maraming maraming salamat. Can you hear me? Maraming salamat Dr. Elena Pernia. Napakaganda ng sinabi niyo at medyo naibsan ang sama ng loob ng marami sa atin. I'm sorry my earpods bumigay na <laughs> sa katagalan ng ating webinar. As you can see, we will be showing on your screens um, the post-test results, there has been a distinct increase in knowledge and understanding of the issues based on the post-test results. Those who have, not, who have actively participated will get the most out of this interactive program. As mentioned, this is the 10th and last webinar of the National Forum on Communication and Democracy Philippine Elections 2022. Please stay tuned for updates on upcoming projects and activities in the PCS website or Facebook page. If you would like to watch this or all the other previous webinars in playback, all the webinars in this series will be available for viewing at your convenience at the TVUP YouTube channel. This formally closes the National Forum on Communication and Democracy Philippine Elections 2022. Ako po si Cez Orenia Drilon on behalf of the Philippines Communication Society. Let us strengthen our country's democratic foundations through communication. Mabuhay ang bansang Pilipinas. Mabuhay po kayong lahat at ituloy po. Let's continue the good fight. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat.